has an idea. And that's not nothing. But making ideas real, moving from concept and ideation to creation is what separates the well-intentioned dreamers of history to those who create something, who change the arc of history. The potential to do that exists in this room, but it doesn't happen on its own. What I'm going to talk with you about really lines up perfectly with the origin of this conference, which is that the military needs more disruptive thinkers. And so I'd like to share with you an approach that fuels disruption, not for disruption's sake, but is a proven method for making an impact on the status quo. My guess is that some of what follows will seem awkward. Some of what follows will seem unorthodox. Well, maybe not to some in this room. And some of it will fo what follows will seem so ordinary and commonplace because you've practiced it a million times before without ever thinking about it. Informed common sense, if you will. I've spent the better part of my life refining it because I truly believe that big challenges require intentionality around the process, the systems, and approach. The process I'm going to talk with you about has already been used to take on big, serious challenges. And it begins with a simple fact. We are all prisoners of our own perspective. Let me repeat that. We are all prisoners of our own perspective. Every day, in every way, we bring the perspective of our own life experience, successes and failures alike, to bear on the challenges we face. After all, we are all our own main characters in our movie called Life. Whether we are solving a problem that could change the course of history, or simply getting through another day of tasks and meetings, our own perspective is always front and center. Let me show you what I mean. What do you see? Well, if you're in the market for a new apartment and an urban area, looks like a nice block, nice neighborhood, you have a neighbor who likes gardening. If you're a member of law enforcement, you see something else. You, what you see is you get some bikes out front. But what really concerns you is what might be happening underneath those stairwells. If you're a thief, you have a different perspective. You might notice that there's no security camera on that front step. But you also notice there's an open window on the first floor. It all depends on your perspective. And with things like this, it's OK to have a different perspective. Point being, the same street looks awfully different to different people, depending upon their objectives, their priorities. And as I said, that's OK. But when we're looking at a complex problem, like innovating new tools for the Department of Defense, the military, for the US military, instead of a street, it becomes problematic. Those who succeed typically have an innate ability to see things from a few perspectives. What is exceedingly rare, however, is for anybody to consider the entire spectrum of perspectives. One of the things that we'll discuss shortly, I'll talk about shortly, is the profound impact that Hollywood has had on the world. For now, let's use a clip from one of my favorite films, Lucy, to illustrate how powerful breaking out of a prison of your own perspective can be. Not merely looking at something from a different angle, but considering the perspective of time itself. What was not only yesterday, but yesteryear, a generation ago? even further back. 
but more than what was at another time, why was it uh, that way? And what unmade it that way to arrive at the destination we find ourselves at today? Lucy's mind is beyond our comprehension in this clip, surely in part because she is able to literally access the perspective of time and space as if hitting a giant rewind button. But her ability to do this also fundamentally, fundamentally changes the way that she sees the world, her current perspective. It's the coolest visual representation of this phenomena since Neo first unlocked the Matrix. Who doesn't want to be Neo or Lucy? Who doesn't want to use their power for a greater good? Believe me when I tell you that your own power and knowledge are truly enhanced through understanding perspective. Harnessing that power, seeing the matrix, begins with breaking free of the shackles of your own perspective. And it has literally never been more important to do so. Because the way the prison of perspective manifests itself most frequently is through rigidity of thought. Rigidity of thought. We see it all the time, but most of us don't see it for what it is. It is an existential threat to innovative thinking, problem solving, and creativity. You all know, especially you in this room, all know that the world is more complicated than ever. Disruption is everywhere. It destabilizes our systems and norms in ways that we've never seen before. You know, maybe the size and the scope of the challenges that we face are just too much for many minds to bear, for most minds to bear. But for sure, the answers to these challenges cannot be, well, this is the way we've always done it before. By the simple act of you all being here, especially by the nature of this conference, you are endorsing the very idea that things done the way that they have been before aren't necessarily the way that things should be done in the future. But do not forget for a second that rigidity of thought is the unseen enemy, endangering, endangering your capacity to innovate. It courses through bureaucracies and not just governmental ones. Think about it. The cutting edge dreamers of yesterday when they were cooking up fantastical ideas and working out of their garages that challenged the status quo, well, today they're the head of massive corporations staffed by hundreds of thousands of employees beholden to perspectives they could never imagine when they began their journey. What's been lost as a result is creativity, and we need that now more than ever. Because the reality is that most expertise is narrow. Our education systems are designed to focus on specialization. Breadth of experience is rare meaning that many of those tasked with taking on the most complex problem sets are only partly suited to do so. That's where creativity comes in, an absolutely necessary condition to creating a vision and making it a reality, which is why you need to figure out how to bring that creative energy anew to the new challenges that you face. And you can, ironically, look to the past for inspiration. History is rife with incredible minds, polymoths, if you will, who embody this energy in holistic thinking. Think of them as the greatest multidisciplinary thinkers of recorded history. Aristotle, Galileo, Michelangelo, da Vinci, each was unique and ahead of their time. 
My own favorite was da Vinci. In science, art, design, anatomy, each of the areas in which he spent his time, he was willing to have his own assumptions and beliefs questioned over and over and over again. To his dying day, he never stopped asking questions of those with a different perspective, those who he thought was more, were more creative than he was, those who he thought he was more smart than he was, even with his brilliance. In point of fact, he was practicing holistic thinking long before anybody came up with that term. And if you want to increase your organization's chances of succeeding, you'll embrace holistic thinking. But you'll need to do more than just add a da Vinci, and you couldn't anyways, they don't make them like him anymore. You can, however, take inspiration from his approach. That said, inspiration alone isn't enough to get this done, nor is any single modern day polymath. It takes creative energy. Creativity has never been more important, I would argue, no matter what perspective you bring, creativity enhances it. But you can't just buy that energy off the shelf or will it into existence just by wishing for it. You have to go out and find creative minds and figure out how to incorporate them and their brilliance into your organization, into your processes. What can a creative artist do other than create art? Well, look what they've already done. Creatives not only dreamed of a different world than the, the one they live in, they've brought it to life with stories and movies that captivate us long before those dreams were realized in reality. Jules Verne battled sea beasts in submersible vehicles well before the submarine was invented. Star Trek walked with mobile two-way communication devices before each and every one of us was walking around with a cell phone. Okay, fine, but what does that have to do with entrepreneurship? To making my concept a reality, to setting myself apart when it comes to working with, selling to, being part of the government. Well, I would suggest that creatives have a part to play in every challenge you face because they're unbound by the constraints wired into most of our brains. And I can prove it. As IED attacks in Afghanistan and increased, it became clear that training for IED, IED ambushes needed to be enhanced. The thinking was that if we could help our, our soldiers learn how to detect enemy TTPs, they could better identify the IEDs in advance and avoid them. One of DOD's initiatives was involved asking my colleagues and I to think through and come up with a process and a product on how we could help with this challenge. First 100 day challenge, last 100 day challenge, it was all tied to this. General Wallace, who was a four star at TRADOC at the time, wanted soldiers to understand what it was like to experience an IED without hurting them. The result? was the IED battle drill. A simulation featuring a 270 degree curved screen that was 25 feet across, 10 feet high. We shot high definition film rather than using CGI because we wanted to make sure it was completely lifelike. We built a rig that included six cameras that we built and then we discovered and built a process for how to take the warping out of those six cameras so we could broadcast that 270 degrees. We then took an 1151 up-armored Humvee and put it on a motion platform that could detonate between two and eight Gs to simulate an IED blast. All of this with interactive sound right up to the simulating of the ringing in the ears after the blast. All of this fit into a trailer so we could put it down range. It took amusement park riders, video game designers, sound technicians, writers, producers, directors, special effects people 
collaborating with Army experts, subject matter experts from DOD to create this. It worked because the folks, the creative folks, walked into that room prisoners of their own perspective. But they allowed those at DOD to come in with a different perspective. That collaboration produced a simulation system with warfighters real, uh, as close to the real thing as possible. Of the thousands of soldiers surveyed, 99% of the soldiers who went through it recommended the battle drill for other units. The other metrics were equally as powerful. As you all know, those kind of numbers are off the charts. Proving that we were able to provide for the Army a ground system equivalent to Navy and Air Force simulators. It just hadn't been done before for the Army. I remember at one point in time, a three-star general, a terrific guy, walked in the room and he had his hand on the back of the Humvee and blah, 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 blah. He's looking at blah, 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 and his hands vibrate. He says, what did you do with the exhaust? And we said, general, there is no exhaust. This is Hollywood. <laughs> Creatives. Creatives were the solution to it. But that's just a one-off. How about this one? On 9-11 itself, our national security apparatus was woefully unprepared for an attack that used commercial airliners as offensive weapons. Of course they were, many said. Who could have ever foreseen such an eventuality? Well, the entertainment community did. In 1994, Tom Clancy ended one of his Jack Ryan novels, and not the Jack Ryan here today, with a kamikaze pilot crashing a 747 into the U.S. Capitol, decimating, decimating the U.S. Congress. Seven years later, it was clear that the intelligence community hadn't connected the dots. They hadn't used their imagination, and the 9-11 Commission report said so. Now, the national security community is those who proactively seek out creative minds including many involved in the Hollywood productions you all and we all know well. They use the mixed table process to help unlock it. You know, they don't do so for creativity's sake or for the cool factor. As many of you know, if done poorly, it's not cool at all. It could hurt them. They don't do so because the 9-11 Commission report called them out called it out for lack of imagination. They do so because time and time again, the creative minds have proven to be a great methodology, a great approach to breaking out of the prison of their own perspective and helping others do the same. Creatives and the perspectives they bring matter whatever the challenge they're trying to solve, because they are literally paid Imagineers used to working under a time budget. Paid Imagineers used to working under a time budget. Who wouldn't want that for their blue sky activities? But this only works with collaboration. It only works if they collaborate with the subject matter experts who have deep institutional knowledge of the subject at hand and proven thought leaders from outside of industry with a different perspective. Turns out that most people have a greater degree of creativity within, them, within themselves than they imagine. But most people's creative energy usually gets locked in, boxed in as they age and by the world in which we work and live. This process helps unlock it. Once folks engaged in the mixed table process, they come into their full potential. Closed minds open up. The my way or the highway types hit the road. The abominable no man melts. Rigidity of thought disappears. Creatives inspire this in doing so, produce an environment in which people from all backgrounds can flourish and generating an energy and a passion that didn't exist before. The holistic thinking that emerges from this manner of mixed table has an exponentially better chance of finding a way to overcome challenges than not having that creative energy. 
Unfortunately, you can't just throw these people in a room, add water, and expect results. And that's where structure comes into play. You have to, in a way, force it to happen. Done right, the mixed table provides a construct for discussing really difficult subjects. And in the 100 or so mixed tables I've been part of over the years, participants always start with our arms folded. Why me? What am I doing here? What can I do for it? And in each and every one, they end with, oh, my God, that was so interesting. That was so valuable. That created an aha moment. Passions are ignited. Problems are addressed. It is truly powerful. Which brings me to an important perspective I want to share with you. You're at a mixed table more often than you think. Even if, like today, it's not perfectly structured. Every time you huddle with your team, every room you're in, embrace it. Be a da Vinci. But not just by allowing itself to happen, by forcing yourself to go make it happen. It may seem uncomfortable, but you've got to do it. It's the only way to succeed in these challenging times. Listen, we all face legal and bureaucratic and regulatory, environmental, security, personnel, and political challenges. Any single one of these verticals can doom your organization, and none of us are experts in all of them. So here's what I would humbly ask you to do as you move forward. First, recognize that you have your own prisoner perspective and embrace it to a point. Because to someone else with a different perspective, yours may represent exactly that aha moment that they've been needing. But second, do so while committed to breaking through of your own rigidity of thought. And the simplest way to do that is pretty straightforward. Allow yourself to be challenged. Listen. Learn. Cast no thought aside immediately, no matter how absurd it seems at first blush. And third, trust me when I tell you that utilizing the mixed table ta process helps unlock the da Vinci in all of us. The mixed table with the right ingredients helps you with creativity that you didn't even know you had. The closer we all get to that holistic thinking, the nearer we are to achieving our dreams. It's how you go from looking to seeing, and will help you get from concept and ideation to creation. Thank you all very much. Thank you.